Okay, we're going to start with the lesson for today. <clears throat> today is the April 11th, uh, 2021, and we are studying the book of Esther. Uh, let's just start with a prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us another day of life. We thank you for giving us another opportunity to uh, scrutinize the word of God. Give us your godly wisdom and your godly strength so we can put into practice what we do learn. In, the, in this lesson today. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. So we're going to start with uh, chapter 6, verses from 1 to 14. That night the king could not sleep, so he ordered the book of the Chronicles, the record of his reign, to be brought in and read to him. It was found recorded that the Mordecai had exposed Brigana and Teresh, two of the king's officers who guarded the doorway who had conspired to assassinate King Xerxes. What honor and recognition has Mordecai received for this? The king asked. Nothing has been done for him, his attendants answered. The king said, who is in the court? Now Haman had just entered the outer court of the palace to speak to the king about impaling Mordecai on the pole he had set up for him. His attendants answered, Haman is standing in the court. Bring him in, the king ordered. When Haman entered, the king asked him, What should be done for the man the king delights to honor? The Haman thought to himself, Who is there that the king would rather honor than me? So he answered the king, For the man the king delights to honor, have them bring a royal robe the king has worn and a horse the king has ridden, one with a royal crest placed on his head. Then let the robe and horse be entrusted to one of the king's most noble princes. Let them rob the man the king delights to honor and lead him on the horse through the city streets, proclaiming before him, this is what is done for the man the king delights to honor. Go at once, the king commanded Haman, get the robe and the horse and do just as you have suggested for Mordecai the Jew, who sits at the king's gate. Do not neglect anything you have recommended. So Haman got the robe and the horse. He robbed Mordecai and led him on horseback to the city streets, proclaiming before him, this is what is done for the man the king delights to honor. Afterward, Mordecai returned to the king's gate, but Haman rushed home with his head covered in grief. And he told Seresh, his wife, and all his friends everything that happened to him. His advisors and his wife, Seresh, said to him, since Mordecai, before whom your downfall has started, is of Jewish origin. You cannot stand against him. You will surely come to ruin. While they were still talking with him, the king's Enochs arrived and hurried Haman away to the banquet Esther had prepared. Okay, so as we were talking last week, last week uh, Haman wanted to uh, hang Mordecai, so he built the gallows. And he was going to go the next day to the, uh, to the king's palace and ask for a, a warrant for execution. So he had all prepared. So the next day he goes very early in the morning to the king's palace. Meantime, in the meantime, verse 1 says, uh, the, king, the, the night the king could not sleep. Or that night the king could not sleep. So he ordered the book of the chronicles, the record of his reign, to be brought in and read to him. So that night, the king could not sleep because the king cannot sleep. And no doubt, uh, this was uh, God working behind the scenes. He orders to bring the book of Chronicles. Uh, the book of Chronicles is a book in which uh, the Persians will write everything that happened in the reign. So I guess the king uh, uh, could not sleep and that he would not bring uh, musicians or anybody else to make him sleep. It's like a counting sheep. You know, in our day. So he ordered the book of Chronicles, the record of his reign. Uh, in these Chronicles, there was everything that uh, was happening in the, in the reign for the past, I don't know how many uh, months or years. Um, so he told his advisors to bring the, the book and read to him. And the book was read by people who that was the job, you know, to read the books. And uh, probably went all four hours until the morning. So in the book, in the in the verse two, 
tells us it was found there that Mordecai had exposed Brigana and Teresh, two of the king's officers who guarded the doorway, who had conspired to assassinate King Thersis. So these uh, uh, books, uh, these records, as you, as you remember before uh, in the previous lessons, there are two of the people who uh, were king's advisors or bodyguards were conspiring to assassinate Xerxes, and Mordecai just happened to listen to them. So Mordecai informed of this conspiracy to Queen Esther, and Queen Esther, in, in turn, told uh, the king about this conspiracy, so the, the perpetrators were caught and they were executed. Um, also, you know, uh, as, uh, as the king was listening to this, he asked in verse 3, what honor and recognition has Mordecai received for this? The king asked, nothing has been done, his attendant answered. So the king's question means what honor and reward has been assigned to Mordecai? It was very common the Persian government uh, will reward uh, people like that uh, because a conspiracy was, a, of course, a, a very great thing. And uh, uh, the person who was discovered, he discovered like a whistleblower, he was rewarded. And the attendants answered, nothing has been done for him. Uh, the discovery of the conspiracy against the life of the king would in any country have been regarded as entitled to some reward. But in this case, nothing has been done for him. No favor has been given to him. No greatest, no promotion to honor. Cersei seems to have supposed that some honor or dignity was given to Mordecai, but nothing has happened. In the verse four, the king said, who is in the court? Now Haman just, just had just entered the other court of the palace to speak to the king about impaling Mordecai on the pole he had set up for him. So the king said, who's in the court? Now, now the king is wide awake. He must make up for the omission and do so immediately. The king must have, must have been indignant that such a matter has been overlooked and he wants to have the matter rectified. Not a minute more must be lost. So the hand of God, no question, is behind all this. Now he could have called uh, the wise men. He could have consulted with them like uh, he did when the Vasti refused to come. No, now he gets to, uh, he takes immediate action. Who's in the court? That is, what officer is around here so he can do what uh, he's supposed to be done? The Hammond just entered the other court of the palace. Uh, to speak to the king about Impoli Mordecai. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> uh, the, the attendants were in the other court and they look around and they were surprised to see uh, Haman standing there. So they said, uh, King, uh, Haman is here. Uh, he's in the court. So in, the, in verse five, uh, see the attendants answer, Haman is standing in the court, bring him in, the king ordered. The servants, of course, look in the court and seeing somewhat in, you know, surprise, Haman there mentioning to the king. They would naturally mention the highest uh, official whom they saw in attendance. <clears throat> so uh, as soon as the king finds out that Haman was there, he says, bring him in immediately. So the brevity of this announcement accentuates the urgency of the tribute that the king wants to pay Mordecai. It also increases the dramatic effect that is already having for Haman. Haman, impatient to get the king's consent to have Mordecai executed, has come in, in the dawn, in early in the morning, uh, to ask for the king uh, a warrant to hang Mordecai. Now history is now developing at a rapid pace. In verse six, it says, when Haman entered, the king asked him, what should be done for the man who delights to honor? Now Haman thought to himself, who is there that the king would rather honor than me? Uh, what, you know, we see here a, a miraculous co coincidence. Think about the situation. The moment the king is looking for a suitable way to exalt Mordecai, Haman enters the court. Haman is also busy with the exaltation of Mordecai, but on the gallows. This is not a coincidence, but a directing from God who's working behind the scenes for Mordecai and his people. Now, the king says, ask uh, Haman, 
what should be done for the men who delight? He doesn't mention any names uh, because they would not get a partial answer. So Hanan assumes he thinks for, you know, thoughts for himself, who is the king referring to? Of course he's referring to me. I mean, in, in his mind, he's going through who has been advanced among all the princes and nobles of the realm and was now in such a high honor, both with the king and queen. I mean, who, who can he, who can the king be referring to but myself? So verse seven, so he answered the king, for the man the king delights to honor, you know, uh, he starts talking like that. Now only the king seems to have been ignorant of the feud between Mordecai and Haman. Certainly everybody in Susa must have been aware of it. Now what could Haman imagine but he himself was the object of the king's complacency? Yet Haman could answer the question without appearing to associate with his own fortunes. You know, he could be generous. So completely ignorant of the king's plan, Haman thinks he's the man the king delights to honor. Well, this is how the, he begins to answer. So in verse eight, uh, Haman says, for the man the king delights to honor, have them bring a royal robe the king has worn and a horse the king has ridden, one with the royal crest placed on his head. So Haman says, uh, in the first place, uh, the man to be brought the royal robe, who is the robe with the king has worn. It is not a robe from the royal wardrobe, a robe that gives them royal dignity, but the robe of, king, of the king himself, the wearing of which by any other person was the very highest honor. And, uh, and then he says, and the horse the king has ridden, one with the royal crest placed on his head. The horse in which that man is to ride, not a horse from the royal stable, but the horse on which the king himself has ridden. To rule out any misunderstanding that is really the king's own horse. A royal crest must be put, placed on the, course, the horse's head. Uh, I guess verse 9. Can you read verse 9, Nico? Then let the robe and horse be entrusted to one of the king's most noble princes. Um, let them let them robe the man the king delights to honor, and lead him on the horse through the city streets, proclaiming before him, "This is what is done for for the man uh, the king delights to honor." Okay, right there. Stop right there. Um, of course, we, say, we are talking here about uh, um, the king could not sleep. He had the uh, chronicles read to him. And in the chronicles, we find out that um, Mordecai had saved his life a few years ago, and nothing was done to him. I mean, no, no reward, no recompense. So he asked, uh, if was anything done for Mordecai? He said, no, nothing. And uh, the king said, well, we... Uh, we're gonna have to uh, make this uh, right, uh, you know, this wrong make, make it right. So he said, uh, "Who is around here? Who is in the court?" And in the court, what just happened to be Haman? Haman came early in the morning uh, to ask for a warrant from the king to have Mordecai executed. So he said, Ham "Bring uh, Haman in." So he asked uh, Haman, "What should be done for a king for a, for a man the king honors?" And then Haman, thinking that uh, he was referring to him, he says, uh, have the king uh, uh, bring this man and put in this man a royal robe that the king himself has worn. And have the man ride a horse, that the king's horse, and put on the horse's head a crown so there'd be no misunderstanding. And uh, so this is, we, we are here in verse nine. Uh, and, uh, and of course, lead, lead him to, on the horse to the city streets, proclaiming before him, this is what is done for the man the king delights to honor. Then that distinguished person must lead, lead him on the horse, or the king's horse to the city streets. It must become a public homage. In order not to escape anyone's attention, it must be also proclaimed before him. This is what is done for the man the king delights to honor. 
Okay, so we come to verse 10. Um, Go at once, the king commanded Ammon. Get the robe and the horse and do just as he has suggested for Mordecai, the Jew, who sits on the king's gate. Do not neglect anything you have recommended. Okay, so the king says, go at once, the king commanded Haman, get the robe and the horse, and without delay, go into the royal treasure of Wardor, and uh, take the apparel, the royal robe, you know? And uh, so he does that. And not only that, but, uh, uh, and do, the, the, king, the king continues, do as you have suggested for Mordecai the Jew, who sits at the king's gate. Now, one of the things uh, here uh, that we must point out the most significant words in this paragraph are the words Mordecai the Jew on the lips of the king. Now, up to that time, the king didn't know that Mordecai was a Jew. But as the chronicles were read, probably in the chronicles was related, Mordecai, the Jew that saved the king's life. So there, that's what he learns uh, that Mordecai was a uh, Jewish origin. So the king knew by now that Mordecai was a Jew. However, the writer did, did not say that Cersei understood that Haman had aimed his program against the Jews until Esther revealed it later on. So let's continue. And then he said, do not neglect anything you have recommended. The king did not object to anything that had been proposed and insisted on it that everything be done exactly as Haman had suggested and from which he could not retract. Though nothing could be more mortifying to him, Haman, to do to amend Mordecai, uh, he came to court to, to get a grant to hang him on the gallows he had prepared. So here Haman came to see the king to have Mordecai hang, and in turn, he's gonna have to, you know, praise Mordecai. Uh, so let's go to verse 11, Roman. Okay, what a shock it must have been to Haman to have the king tell him to take the robe and the horse and do all he has suggested to Mordecai the Jew. It seems to up to this time the king did not realize that the people whose destruction he had approved were Jews. Haman had not told him this, though the letters sent by the couriers throughout the land had stated in no uncertain terms that the king had told Haman to do as he pleased about the matter. So there was no need for the king to ever read the proclamation. So what could Haman do? His hands were tied. He could only obey the word of the king in spite of his bitter hatred against Mordecai. It was impossible for Haman to excuse himself. There was no ground on which he could decline the uh, office trust upon him. Reluctantly, without a word, he performed the king's bidding. Haman was not only to have the king's command done, but he had to do it himself. He was one of the king's most noble princes who had dressed, had to dress Mordecai in royal apparel and place him on the horse and lead him through the city streets and proclaim before him. This is what is done for the man the king delights to honor. And all this he did to the man whom he most hated and whom he had erected a gallows. It was a bitter humiliation, but there was no escape from it. So we come to verse 12, uh, Nico. Afterward, Mordecai came to the king's gate, but Haman rushed home with his head covered in grief. Uh, so after all this, this is done, after this, Haman could hardly uh, ask for the king's permission to harm Mordecai. Mordecai is back at the gate. Haman, in bitter disappointment with evil omens, he said, covering the sign, in, in sign of grief, returned to his wife and friends. Uh, verse 13. And told Sarah, his wife, and all his friends, everything that had happened to him. His advisors and his wife, Sarah, and said to him, Since Mordecai, be, before whom your downfall has started, is of Jewish origin, you cannot stand against him. You will surely come to ruin. So he goes, uh, Haman goes back to Sarah, his wife, and his friends, but found no consolation from his friends or his wife. When they hear what happened, they told him that his case was hopeless. They knew that since Mordecai was a Jew and exalted by the king to great honor, this would predict worse trouble for Haman, who had plotted the destruction of all the Jews. Verse 14. Roman? Then said 
Okay, let's sleep back here with him. See if we can steal him. I mean, survive. Cause it's probably gonna be kind of hard, right? Because yeah. our kids are gonna have to be tired. Okay, so uh, but but this is the day in which Esther had planned a banquet for the king of Haman. So he must go immediately to the banquet. And that uh, he will go with some ray of hope that Esther's invitation will prove helpful in resolving the matter of his serious problem as regard to Mordecai. For he did not know that Esther was also a Jew and also related to Mordecai. So as they were talking with the friends and the wife and all that, that uh, the wife and the friend were telling him, you're in trouble, you're in more trouble than before. As they were talking, the king's Enoch or chamberlains knocked on the door to, to take Haman to Esther's banquet. So next lesson we're going to see the uh, when the you know uh, the height of uh, all these things. Uh, that's when the uh, rubber meets the road. You know we're going to see that um, Esther will tell the king what the Hamas has been plotting, and then the consequences of that. Okay, to end this uh, this lesson, I'd like to uh, read uh, a few verses from Psalm 37. With all that's going on and uh, with all the injustices that we see in our country and other countries and uh, sometimes we're frustrated but we have to find a uh, refuge in the lord especially in psalm 37 it says better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked for the power of the wicked will be broken but the lord upholds the righteous the blameless spend their days under the lord's care and their inheritance will endure forever in times of disaster, they will not wither. In days of famine, they will enjoy plenty. But the wicked will perish, for the Lord's enemies are like flowers of the field. They will be consumed. They will go up in smoke. So revenge is mine, says the Lord. So it's not for us to take revenge, but for the Lord. Okay, this concludes the uh, lesson for today. Let me finish this part.